This PC on the desk behind me is a recent unit that I picked up in a deals hunt for roughly 300 Aussie dollars or a little over 200 United States, big ones. And it had an RX 470 inside. It also had a Athlon 3000G, a single stick of DDR4 memory, and it was untuned. And it also had the case, the power supply, the A320 motherboard, and a two terabyte hard drive. And so at this price, I could really only see one thing, and that was potential. And so my objective with this build here today is to what I call spruce it up. Now you're probably thinking, what is a spruce prime? What's a sprucing? What is this new term that you've been throwing around lately? Well, it's a combination of spicing it up. So we're gonna be cleaning it up and making it look better since it's got a lot of dust on it. And we're also gonna be juicing it up in that we're gonna be adding some components on board. And so that makes it a sprucing. And try not to confuse your friend Bruce with spruce. Anyhow, in terms of those upgrades, they're all pretty important to get better performance. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is adding a Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Six cores, 12 threads, and performs pretty much the same as a Ryzen 5 2600. Now we're also gonna be throwing in a 120 gigabyte SSD, so this thing can boot up and use Windows 10 a lot quicker. The next thing we're gonna be doing is upgrading the graphics card, 5600 XT. Pretty good price performance and will perform a lot better than an RX 470. Then the last component we're throwing in, of course, and I believe one of the most important, is to make this thing dual channel. So we're gonna be adding in another eight gigabyte stick of memory for DDR4. Then with all that aside, I'm gonna test out this thing right now in its current state and then do the upgrades and see how much performance we gain. Tech yes, citizens, I have negotiated a new 18% off coupon code on a Windows 10 Pro single end user license with today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, for as little as 13 bucks using the coupon and the link in the description below. Character's not even getting displayed. <laughs> <laughs> So we've now just finished benchmarking this PC and it was a really weird experience. Uh, what we've got right here is the best case scenario. For Honor actually ran with no stuttering, it ran pretty smooth. 75 average FPS, 1080p high settings, 45 minimum. But Fortnite, I, it was doing some really weird stuff. In Fortnite, uh, none of the things were displaying properly. There was like trees going through my character and I couldn't get a proper reading in that game. I couldn't even like hit the uh, benchmark key, which I can do right now on this uh, game to get an accurate benchmark number. So that was really weird. And then Doom, uh, that was stuttering as well. And that's really weird for Doom to stutter. This was 1080p high settings as well for Doom, as opposed to Fortnite where we use competitive settings. So Doom and Fortnite were really bad experience, but of course that single channel untuned memory is probably most likely the biggest culprit for those two games not running properly. With that aside, it's finally time to give this thing some tech yes loving, change the video card over, put the extra RAM in, and that 1600 AF. We also may have to update the BIOS just as a precautionary uh, measure.
So now we've finished up the sprucing of this PC. It is so much cleaner. Before it was so dirty to the point where the cloth that we were using to clean it with did pick up a lot of dirt and also the dust filter under the power supply, that was filthy. And another problem we came into was at the rear of the build, one of the USB ports had the IO shield uh, protector bit going into the USB port, which is really not a good thing. You can't really use that, but it could also cause some problems. But now that we've fixed up everything, we've tuned the memory to 2800 megahertz since it is using an originally like a 2400 megahertz stick and we've added in another 2666 stick. This is pretty much budget memory, but we can still clock it to 2800 megahertz and get some good uh, frames, but it's also in dual channel now. So that's that with this build. But another good thing we did was we pulled out an RX 470 and also that dual core 3000 G. So we can use that for an office PC later. And then this uh, graphics card right here, we can use that in a separate build at a later date. But finally, with all that aside, it's now time to test this thing out in games and see how much performance we shall gain. And we've just finished up now benchmarking this PC right here, the Sprucer. And I was just blown away by how much smoother things were for starters, but also it's such a good path to consider if you don't mind buying someone else's PC that they have and they just really had a bad configuration from the get-go. Because what we saw here was Doom suddenly lifted to over 170 FPS 180 FPS when it originally was at around 44 FPS. Now, the RX 470 is going to go a lot harder than 44 FPS in this game at 1080p high settings. It was just being let down by the single channel untuned memory in the 3000G. Now, adding in the Ryzen 5 1600F made a huge difference in Doom. It also made a huge, and this was the biggest difference in Fortnite, the game was completely playable and we're getting around like 200 FPS on average, it was working absolutely fine. Everything was smooth. So that may be a problem if you guys are playing Fortnite and your system isn't configured properly, especially if it's running in single channel memory and you've got say a dual core, you may come into this issue where things are not appearing properly on your screen. And so that's something to be, I guess, aware of with Fortnite where I've actually never run into that problem. And I initially thought maybe it could have been the hard drive, but here's the scary thing is that is, I actually tested all these games out and redid it with the hard drive because all the games were already installed. I didn't have to reload anything. And so now I'm gonna go back after this video and reinstall the whole OS on the SSD and make things even better. Because I think in Fortnite, it was dipping the 0.1% lows because that hard drive was having a hard time loading up background process in Windows while it's trying to load up some of the stuff in the game. So that's definitely something you can be aware of if you're diagnosing problems for your friends, say in Fortnite and they're running with potatoes, they might wanna put in some dual channel memory or upgrade to at least a true quad core. Though the last game actually surprised me the most and that was For Honor where this game is clearly extremely well optimized for PC where it was running absolutely fine beforehand and then after we still got a massive boost in FPS. We're running at like 166 FPS average and the minimums were incredible too but it didn't give us in respects to the other two games we're running uh, the same amount of gain if that makes any sense even though we got over double the fps it still ran kind of smooth beforehand so that was impressive to see with for honor i do like it when these pc games are really well optimized and that's one title i can think of off the top of my head but another title as well would be Strange Brigade. They're probably, like after doing this testing, they're probably the top two games on PC that you can even run in single channel and you probably won't notice a huge difference to your FPS. It then becomes a GPU bound where you'd have to upgrade your graphics card to get more FPS. With that being said, the RX 470 is capable of more FPS in that game. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. 
Definitely on the AMD side, I like the A320 motherboards. They go really well with six core 12 threads, especially the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Even though we can't overclock it on this build, it still runs absolutely fine out of the box at 3.7 gigahertz all core. And we tuned that budget memory to 2800 megahertz. Now, something about that budget memory, right? If you come into this real cheap 2400, no heat sinks and no XMP profile memory, you can still get more out of it. And I found 2800 megahertz around like what we got here, CL17 is still a decent speed and it will give you a lot more FPS than the previous config on that memory. And of course we didn't break the bank in sprucing this thing up and the FPS was really smooth. So this is an option to consider if you're in the market and you wanna get really good FPS for the dollar. And the story behind this PC was apparently the guy I bought it off, he like, I don't even know because I've been asking for more details and I just haven't really followed up on the situation properly to get both sides of the story yet. But one thing you guys said in the previous video in the comments, and this is the most important thing to come out of stuff like this and the previous story where, where I got this PC, was that when you're buying used parts, always make sure you check it out and it's working and you're getting what you pay for before you buy it. And so I think that's the most important thing rather than the actual story itself, it's the message involved. And that is when you buy stuff in the PC world, especially if it's got that used price tag. And this is a funny thing, even when it's new and you buy it from some Amazon stores and the price is too good to be true, just double check and ask around. I mean, sometimes with a good deal, you don't have time to ask around. So it's kind of, the main thing with used parts, if the seller has no reputation, no feedback, definitely go make sure that part is working before you purchase it. That's the most important thing. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comment section below what you would have done differently if you had got this streaming PC, which couldn't even play Fortnite without streaming. So that, that streaming thing that when I originally bought it, that this wasn't a streaming PC. Now it's a streaming PC. It can definitely stream, but what you would have done differently, love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, just like this question of the day, which comes from Super Kanuna, and they ask, do you have a life? And if you guys uh, keep watching the Tech Yes City around here, I think you know the answer and that is no, I don't have a life. And when RTX 3000 hits in August, yeah, like if I even if I had a little bit of a life, it's it's gone. If you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that content around tech, yes, city, and you know what to do, hit that sub button, ring that bell to get this content the moment it drops in your sub box, and I'll catch you on the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Whoa.